be interested to get feedback from each of you on where decisions are made about bringing a new codec in. I mean, Hassan sort of briefly touched on, you know, new devices can handle other codecs. But maybe the question is, because those can handle AVC and they can handle other codecs, what's the decision point as to using another codec? Is it power efficiency? Is it, as Andre said, um, uh, a better degrading at lower bit rates and that kind of thing? Andre, what from a decision standpoint for you all, what, what are the decisions there for new codec? Uh, well, first, an important factor is if it enables new applications, for example, as in, or formats, as in case of uh, 4K or HDR, uh, you, you may know that you, you you need a new new codec if you would like to stream that. Uh, of course, the rate distortion performance, uh, that's basically uh, how, if it increases the quality of experience for our members, that those who have lower bandwidth would, would receive better quality. Uh, projected device support is important. So what, what we think uh, the... Uh, the number of decoders in the field is going to be in the in the future, uh, and and of course some other things like uh, how it behaves under certain conditions. For example, in the very low bitrate scenario, uh, potentially in live encoding, and and uh, we, we are now streaming live as well. Uh, some some features that uh, that codecs uh, may have for particular particular scenarios as well. And in the end, uh, one factor is also, uh, at least for the video on demand, uh, the codec is going to take place on the CDN. So it's uh, typically in, in VOD, it's not a replacement of something, but you, you add it to the CDN. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, we, we typically need to support uh, the long tail of devices going forward. So you also need to make a decision uh, whether the, uh, let's say the trail on your, on your CDN, you have to weigh, weigh it against uh, the uh, positive sides as well. Very good point. Uh, Hassan. Well, um, similar aspects to what Andrea just mentioned. So we, we start by focusing on the on the benefits. Well, what is what, what's in it for our users? Um, in this case, a new codec brings in a lot of um, benefits. Usually, um, one of the examples we have seen is we've seen AV1 bringing in um a lot of enabling a lot of quality for um countries with with uh, much lower bandwidth restricted bandwidth and this is this has been a, a game changer for for some of the applications um as you go through um you know lower bitrate means even for the people that have enough quality um you know lower bitrate means faster decode means faster prefetch means uh, more videos to be loaded means better experience in general, and that is that is great. As Andre mentioned, adding a new codec uh, costs more storage, more costs on the CDN. You need to have those renditions, and so we actively work on on optimizing that. And this is one of the main reasons. Actually, sorry, I'm touching back on AVC, but one of the main reasons we are moving away from AVC because we don't want to keep uh, yet another AVC uh, rendition in there. Um, in terms of storage costs, actually, in, in our use case, we deal with a few billion videos a day, um, uh, approximately. Um, and we, we tend to try to keep all of those videos so that you can have your memories uh, after 10 or 15 years. Um, if we keep them in the original state that it came uh, through uh, in an AVC high bitrate stream, then we would be paying a lot for our storage. Um, in, in other ways, uh, what we could do is we could recompress that uh, original video with much newer codecs, uh, and that will allow us to maintain your quality at a much higher bitrate, uh, much lower bitrate, uh, and that will allow us to to be much better. Now, the you know, the the most important piece after we think about benefit uh, is thinking about the costs and um, transcoding costs. I mean, I've been in the codec business for a while now, and we always thought of newer codecs as being more expensive to get the bitrate efficiency. We try to think a bit otherwise. So we try to add to that RD curve, we try to add the, the, the cost uh, dimension. And so we ask ourselves, what would the codec give us at the same complexity? Um, I don't need 30%, can I get 20? Can I get 25? 
I don't want to increase my footprint. Uh, I want my CPUs to be running at about the same power or my, my ASIC to be running at the same power. And so it's really critical for us for any codec implementation to have these um, trade-off points or, or what we also call presets at the dev board um, of quality versus uh, complexity. And we ask of this uh, even in the ASIC implementations to be able to reduce the power of that ASIC um, even uh, when giving us a little bit lower quality. And that way we would capture the 80-20 basically uh, in a sense, and we would be a bit more um, uh, you know, uh, efficient when it comes to supporting the work project. From, uh, from my perspective, there are, let's say, maybe three uh, most important things uh, when we made a decision about next codec. First one is um, uh, device uh, footprint coverage, because uh, uh, this, this can be in direct proportion how much saving we can get on the IP network and CDA inside, and that can be very significant for other, our telcos. Another one is uh, saving uh, a bit rate saving uh, versus previous codec versus AVC, of course, and that is also important uh, related to the bandwidth. And the third one is encoding complexity on how we're going to implement that codec. So uh, uh, those three things, we can add some more like DRM support, like um, support in encapsulation, et cetera. And from my point of view, the, the best balance between all those things um, we have with HEVC is slightly uh, more expensive on encoding side, but have a relatively good uh, 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 device coverage. And um, yeah, that's that's the, the some, something from live streaming perspective, how we, we see that.